Today I have the Astrolux WP-1 LEP flashlight. It's capable of 250,000 candela and 480 lumens out of the included 21700 lithium ion battery. It's got a control ring for UI. And if you've seen my review of the Jetbeam RRT M1X wrapper, you might notice a few similarities more further on in this review. Thanks to Banggood for sending this light to me and providing a discount for my viewers. They've got a coupon good for 25% off the cost of the Astrolux WP-1. Check out the description below on where you can find that. While you're there, likes, subscribe, and check out my social media channels. The light comes in a large plastic case with handles. On the front is a sticker showing the light and listing a few headlines. And on the back, there's another sticker showing the runtime chart and things to various social media platforms. This box is the same box as the Jetbeam came in. And this is just one part of why I think these lights are similar. Let's take a look at the other accessories. You get a basic lanyard here. You get the user manual. You get a USB to micro USB charging cable for the battery on board. It does have have a charging cable there that you can see, and I'll talk more about that later. You get a bag of extras, two extra O-rings, and an extra button switch. These red O-rings, if you've seen my jet beam review, you'll know that that's their color, that's their thing, another indication. And then you get a basic holster here, which I'll talk more about in the retention section. Astrolux brought out two leap style lights earlier in 2021 that appear to mirror the jet beam RRT M1X that I've reviewed and the M2S WPRX in physical appearance and closely in performance, along with the main difference being the engraving on the body and the price. I strongly suspect that the parent manufacturer for this Astrolux light is Jetbeam. The anodizing on the two are very, very similar. I'll call them identical. Here is my RRT M1X Raptor. You can see the anodizing is the same. The tail caps are the same. They're interchangeable. The body tubes are the same. They are interchangeable, as well as the uh, rubber grommet here. You do have a little bit of texture difference on that control ring and the heads, obviously, because these are different model lights. But for all intents and purposes, I believe the Astrolux is a jet beam. If we look at the tail here, we, we've got two little ears. This is where your lanyard um, attachment point is. You've got a button here. This is a mechanical button and fairly loud with a nice amount of grip there. The light will tail stand, but it's not the most stable as you can see there as I bump the table. Threads on the inside here are square cut and you've got that red o-ring nicely greased. Inside you've got a spring very very similar to what the other Astrolux and Jetbeam had. You've got this rubber ring to allow you to do a cigar grip or just as an anti-roll. It's decent. On the body here you've got some knurling, a couple of flats with your minimal engraving on here. I like that. The body tube is removable from the light if you wish. There is a picture of the inside of what that looks like. The head features the rotating control ring. You've got five detents that just are over 180 degrees in total movement. They feel okay, not super crisp, but not mushy either. I like the rotary control ring. They work great in the winter with gloves on. Not so important this time of year. The bezel of the light is non-removable here. You can see it is one piece design. You can see the lens down in there. And it does look like it's threaded, but uh, I don't think it actually is. And that's nicely protected the lens down there. You'd have to have something poking it pretty hard to get at that. You do get a little bit of light leak through these little uh, crenulations on the side here. I measured the length of light at 158.3 millimeters. Minimum diameter is 24 millimeters on the flat of the body here. Maximum diameter is 36.7 on the control ring. Weight of the supplied light with battery is 230 grams. And the light is IPX8 water rated, so waterproof. Here are a few photos of similar lights that I own and competitors. So you can kind of get an idea of the size of this thing. Retention, the light does have lanyard options, as I mentioned here on the tail. Not a big deal if you like those. This is actually a light I'd probably consider doing that with. Here is the holster. It's made of ballistics nylon. It's got a little bit of neoprene or padding on the inside. Velcro cover, expandable elastic sides. On the back, you've got a belt loop with a button and a bit of Velcro there, so you can button it on. And it's fairly stiff, and I don't think you'll have any trouble with it going anywhere. The light does go in easiest head up, and this is what it looks like clasped together. So in 7 LED, the WP-1 uses an LEAP, or Laser Excited Phosphorus. Astrolux calls this the WPT2 LEP. It's the same as what Jetbeam calls their module as well. LEAPs work by using a blue laser emitter on a layer of phosphorus to create a whitish beam that is then sent through a convex series of lenses to create a fine point. Think of it kind of like a laser pointer. The result is a beam that's extremely concentrated at eight feet. This one's maybe about a uh, 10 inch circle. It also basically has no spill like your traditional flashlight does. This concentrated beam does spread out a little bit at distance. This light makes quite a bit 
bigger of spread out beam than my uh, Jetbeam RRT M1X Raptor, and I'll show that in my night shots here in my backyard. Okay, I wanna do just some beam comparison shots with this light here. This is the neighbor's fence, and I've got it on max lumens here, so it's blowing things out a little bit. I can turn it down one notch, you can see a little bit better. But the neighbor's fence is about 200 feet that I've got the light trained on right now. If I go across the street here, I'll bump up to high, we can see the trees here. Those are an easy, a little beyond 300 feet, and the building's probably a good 400 feet. But this is the Astrolux WP-1, and this is the Jetbeam RRT M1X. And you can see the beam size is just a lot smaller, a lot more focused. Here's the neighbor's fence, and there it is across the street. So on the left is the Jetbeam, on the right is the Astrolux. And you can see the big difference in beam size. Remember, this is only 400, 350, 400 feet something like that for comparison here. My lake shots do a better job of total night shots. The tint here definitely has a bluish tint to it and there's a little bit of artifacts, especially at closer range. You don't notice those at a distance though. And there's no visible PWM to the eye or camera. Here are my night shots for the Astrolux WP-1. This is a leap powered light, which we've looked at from other manufacturers here. And right now I've got it in the high setting, 480 lumen which doesn't sound like a lot, but you can see it's a very, very small, intense beam. And you can see it hits the bank over here, which is about 580 meters, no problem. And I've actually got a canoer here, so I'll try not to blind him as he's coming in at the local lake here, but you see it's super bright. If I click down one, we can see that is 75 lumens. And at that point, we can't get across the lake anymore. Kind of hard to see with all the uh, light pollution that's behind me, but you can see on the dock here, very, very tight beam and we can illuminate the canoe pretty easily too. And bumping down one more, here's 15 lumen, still easily reaches the deck of the dock, no problem. Reaches the plant, no problem. You can see it's a very, very small beam. On high, we're rated for about 250,000 candela. And this light is very small, about fits in your hand, no big deal. So pretty impressive throw for something this size. In comparison, the Ace Beam 17 is only 160,000 candela and only 802 meters. So you pick up quite a bit of distance here for a light that's roughly the same size. One light I did want to compare it to was the Olight Javelot Pro here. This is running a conventional Cree XHP35 high LED, 21,000 lumens. What we can see here, it does reach the bank and light it up. It's a bigger beam, a little bit more useful, closer on, has some spill to it where the leap lights have none, but you can see that uh, it's just not as intense of light. So kind of a middle ground here, but on paper, these two compare really well. So here is the leap again of the Astrolux. You can see that beam real well, very, very small. And here is the Olight Javelot Pro. And it reaches there too, but it's not as intense a beam. It'd be hard to pick something out on that bank whereas the Astrolux here, you can see a little bit fo more focused and better, and the cost is quite a bit less too. So here is the Jetbeam RRT M1X Leap that I reviewed a couple weeks ago. This is running the same light engine, I believe, as the Astrolux. This head on this is quite a bit bigger, and Astrolux ends up making a very, very similar model. I think the Jetbeam here on the left is really just a rebadged light. These are different size lights. That's why you're seeing the different sized beams. The uh, jet beam here on the right has a larger head. It's a more focused beam. The Astrolux here on the left, I believe the same light engine, and you can see the lights beam spread out a little bit more. It makes more sense if I go like this, where you can kind of see how the Astro, the jet beam here on the right, it kind of gets wide, narrows down, and then fattens up on the end, and the Astrolux is kind of the same diameter the whole way across. Both reach the bank here at 580 meters just fine. No issue there. Both are very, very tight beams on short distances like this here at the dock. I expected that this light would produce more heat because of how intense it is, but it really doesn't. Uh, maximum heat I saw was 36C during testing, and that's a regulated temp. The light is a smaller body and gets about four degrees warmer than the uh, larger jet beam model, but it does seem to have timed step downs to about 40% relative output after three minutes. Compare that to other LED based throwers, and this is good given that other LED based throwers generally produce much more heat and can produce your maximum output for less time. Total 
runtime on high here with the included 5,000 milliamp hour battery was five hours, 14 minutes with several step downs along the way. After 12 minutes, uh, your light's running about 30% relative output, but you can bump it back up if you want by just clicking down a notch and then clicking back up. Pretty easy to do. When the light shut down, I measured 2.974 volts and you don't need a high output battery here with the uh, maximum app maximum amperage rating under three amps. Since this light is using a non-proprietary button top battery, but it is long in length, you can choose any based off capacity rather than performance here to get the maximum runtime. UI here is super simple with this control ring light. When the control ring is all the way to the left, you are in the lowest mode. Your on off button is on the tail cap here. I have it on right now. Then you just rotate forward, you get low, medium, high, and then you get a fast strobe, almost too fast for my opinion. Then you get a blinking SOS mode and that's it nothing more to this one recharging here is accomplished with the included unbranded battery 5000 milliamp hour 21700 the battery is itself micro usb built in here same as the jet beam my guess is this is the same underlying cell you've got an led here on top that goes red when charging green when charged and i would have loved to see usb c here instead this battery charged quite slowly uh, maximum charging rate i saw was 0.75 amps and it took a lengthy 7 hours 31 minutes fully charged the battery measured 4.2 206 volts. My recommendation here would be to use your own charger like the Vape Cell S4 Plus that I've reviewed or the XStar VC4 SL and charge at a much more quickly rate. This battery can very safely handle two amps of charge rate and that'll cut the charge time to in more than half. I tested the capacity of battery with my Vape Cell S4 Plus charger at 4719 milliamp hours. So the pros for me are it's got a simple name, it's got a good size in the hand and filters are available to make the leap more practical for more tasks. They've got a set of colored filters and the control ring is really easy to use both uh, normally and especially with gloves. The cons are the strobe is too fast. I wish it came with optional diffusers to make it more practical instead of be being an add-on extra for this price range. This is fairly expensive, although inexpensive for a leap and the tint here isn't great. It's pretty cool white, but there wasn't any green higher outputs. My conclusion is given this light's apparent similarity with its sibling jet beam cousins, I'd say go for whichever you can find at the best deal. Banggood is known for having coupons, so it might end up being that Astrolux version that I've got here. From a physical and performance standpoint, I can't tell a lot of difference other than beam shape. I don't have both models to directly compare it to, but from reading the forums and looking at them and comparing my, the Astrolux WP-1 to my Jetbeam RRT M1X Raptor, I think they're likely the same, made on the same line, with the main difference being the engraving and maybe the control ring being one being knurled, one being straight. Other than that, they're the same light. The big difference between the WP-1 and the Jetbeam Raptor is the design and the size of their head and a bit of styling. The Astrolux WP-1 here is much smaller and is easier to hold in the hand, easier to put in a jacket or coat or something like that. So it's probably my go-to unless I need the really small beam of the RRT M1X Raptor. While Leap Lights are really fun, their performance is incredible. I struggle to find really many general uses for them. The hotspot here is larger and thus makes it more useful than my other Leap Light. But realistically, this isn't something most people need and it still has basically no spill. This does work well for a searchlight or something like that, signaling or possibly on a hunting rifle at lower settings with the colored filters. But this isn't something you'd really wanna take camping or be super useful in like a power outage situation. That said, it has pretty solid performance and a Leap is something that every flashlight obsessed individual should have in their collection. And the Astrolux WP-1 is a decent choice. Let me know what you think in the comments, guys, of the Astrolux WP-1. Don't forget to check out that comment if you are interested in buying one of these and save 25% on that for a limited time. Make sure you like this video or subscribe to the channel so you don't miss future reviews. Thanks for watching.